Hello everyone, this week's manner of death is undetermined and homicide. Saline County Jane Doe In April of 2022, a hunter found remains near the Missouri River in Miami, Missouri. The location is known to flood. The remains are thought to belong to a female in her teens or early 20s. Bomb pulse radiocarbon dating hints the Jane Doe could have been born in the early 60s and died in the mid-70s to early 80s. However, because of deterioration and the elements, nothing else can be identified and no other items were found. Even an analysis of the skull could not help narrow the Jane Doe's race or ancestral background. In June of 2022, her case was entered into NamUs, the National Missing and Unidentified Person System, as number UP92925. In 2023, the Saline County Coroner's Office and Southeast Missouri State University teamed up with Othram Labs to hopefully identify Saline County Jane Doe. Her case is featured on DNA Solves and is on the crowdfunding page. If you'd like to donate to this case, I will leave a link in the description. Middlesex County John Doe In November of 2014, human remains were found floating in the Connecticut River by some kayakers in Cromwell, Connecticut. It's thought Middlesex County John Doe was an African-American male in the age range of 21 to 35. He most likely passed a few weeks prior. He was 5 foot 10 inches and weighed 200 pounds at the time of death. He had black hair, a black mustache, and a beard. John Doe had two scars, which include a 1 inch to 1 and a half inch curvilinear scar on the left elbow and a 1 inch to 1 and a quarter inch scar surrounded by suture scars on the dorsal side of his right hand. When found, he was wearing a pair of white ASIC sneakers, blue checkered boxer shorts, and blue jeans with some nylon shorts on top of the jeans. There was a black sock threaded through the belt loop of the jeans, which could have been a sort of belt. In December of 2014, his case was put into NamUs as case number UP13320. In 2023, the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner teamed up with Othram to use DNA to help find leads to solve this case. His case is featured on DNA Solves and is on the crowdfunding page. If you'd like to donate to this case, I will leave a link in the description. Also, if you have any information that could help John Doe's case, please call the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner at 860 679 3980 and reference case number 06-12497. Westbrook John Doe. In September of 1986, a fisherman in the Long Island Sound off Westbrook, Connecticut found human remains. According to forensic anthropologists, the John Doe was a white male between the ages of 18 and 30. His cause of death is unknown, and other physical descriptions could not be determined. It's thought he was deceased for at least five years. Thirty-nine years later, in October of 2015, John Doe's case was submitted into NamUs as number UP14439. Even with this, the case remained cold. In 2023, the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner entered a partnership with Othram to solve their log of cold cases. Genetic genealogy and forensic-grade genomic sequencing will be used to help solve cases like this John Doe's. Even with the help of this testing, tips and other information could be helpful in solving this case. If you have any information that could help John Doe's case, please call the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner at 860-679-3980 and reference case number M-86-341. I will leave information to this in the link down in the description. Also, if you would like, you can donate to this case on dnasolves.com, as it's being crowdfunded for currently. Clallam County Doe 
In August of 2008, a walker was strolling on the beach by Old Silver King Resort near Port Angeles, Washington, when they found a single shoe with a sock and a human foot inside. The Clallam County Sheriff's Office sent out a press release promptly on August 5, 2008, with information about the remains and the items found with it, being the sock and shoe. The shoe was described as a size 11 Everest brand shoe that was made for the right foot. The sock was a Levi's brand tube sock. No other items were recovered, so all they had to go by was the sock, shoe, and the remains. Little description can be made off of the small amount of evidence at the time. However, in 2023, Clallam County Sheriff's Office teamed up with Othram to get DNA from the remains and see if that DNA can be used for genome sequencing to hopefully identify whose foot was found. If you have any information that could help solve this Doe's case, please contact the Clallam County Sheriff's Office at 360-417-2262. And reference case number 2008-7859. A crowdfund has also been made for this case if you'd like to donate to help cover lab fees. Shively Jane Doe On July 2005, partial remains were discovered by a construction crew that was cleaning out a lot on the 3600 block of 7th Street Road in Shively, a suburb of Louisville, Kentucky. It's thought Jane Doe was a white female between 20 to 40 years of age. Her manner of death could potentially be homicide, at least according to law enforcement. She stood at 5 feet 2 inches and is thought to have brown hair, based on hair recovered nearby. But the hair could have only been hair root color, and not the actual color of the Jane Doe's hair at the time of her death. Another description is that Jane Doe's nose was, quote, distinctly narrow, end quote. No other items were discovered. Two years later, in June of 2007, Jane Doe's case was submitted into NamUs under case number, number UP74. An artist rendering was also made in 2009. A lot of people have been ruled out as Jane Doe. It's noted over 100 women have been found to not be Jane Doe, so her case has been looked at quite a bit. In 2023, the Shively Police Department teamed up with Othram and DNA technology will be used to hopefully identify Shively Jane Doe. If you have any information that could help solve her case, please contact the Shively Police Department at 502-448-448. 6181 and reference case number FA-2005-41 or NamUs ID number UP74. Jane Doe's case is also being crowdfunded for if you'd like to donate to help cover the lab fees. Will County John Doe In 1998, a truck driver walked through a wooded area by a truck stop off Interstate 55 or what is known as State Route 53, in Bolingbrook, which is southwest of Chicago, Illinois. During this walk, he found a human skull. Then, when the area was searched, further remains were discovered, which equated to about half of a human skeleton. Clothing and other items were also recovered, including a pair of 9 to 9.5 size Nike Air Force Max shoes, a extra-large size light blue nylon starter jacket, blue jeans, and a 32-inch Levi silver tap belt. A Motorola pager was also found, which was traced back to being bought in the south side of Chicago, right near the remains. It's thought John Doe is a black male whose cause of death was a single gunshot wound to the head, meaning he may have been a victim of foul play so a potential homicide victim. He most likely died one to five years before being found, so he was probably not killed before 1993, according to the investigators. John Doe was likely between the ages of 18 and 24. 
he stood between 5 foot 5 inches to 5 feet 11 inches and weighed 160 to 185 pounds. He also had black hair and a noticeable overbite. His left foot also had some signs of a previously fractured heel. In 2009, his case was uploaded to NamUs as number UP5207. A forensic sketch was also made. Even with this, the case went cold. In 2023, the Will County Coroner's Office teamed up with Othram, hoping to use DNA technology to discover this John Doe's identity. If you have any information that could help solve Will County John Doe's case, please call the Will County Coroner's Office at 815-727-8455 and reference case number 160-98. John Doe's case is also being crowdfunded for, if you'd like to donate to help with the lab fees. Stafford County Jane Doe In November of 1998, human remains were found by hunters under a pile of leaves near Telegraph Road in Stafford County, Virginia. Jane Doe was a white female thought to be in the age range of 25 to 45 years old. She stood from 5 feet 8 inches to 5 feet 11 inches. Her hair was most likely medium light brown. An autopsy showed that Jane Doe had a healed rib fracture, meaning she had possible chest trauma. She had probably passed away several months to a year before being found. A lot of other items and clothing were recovered with her remains. Among those items were a Washington Redskin shirt, a pair of black and white cuffed shorts that were camouflage or tiger patterned, two pairs of dark colored hose, one of those hose had a diamond pattern and the other had a tag with legs spelled L-E-G-G-S size B, pieces of blue jeans and a zipper with a tag stating made in America were also found. Shoes and glasses were recovered as well. The shoes were a size 8.5 tan-colored canvas high heels with rubber soles and buckles with the label classified. The glasses were tortoiseshell sunglasses with the word China stamped on them. Little accessories were also retrieved including one yellow metal earring, a black ring with a pentagram, a gold tone ring with on onyx stones, a blue cigarette lighter, a long brown comb, a plastic pink bear trinket, and a small clear plastic bag decorated with shamrocks. In 2009, the Stafford County Sheriff's Office had an expert look at the two rings that were found at the scene. The size 10 ring with the pentagram had a black emerald stone and was stamped with 925 on it, which means the ring is made from silver. The black onyx ring is a size 7 and 1 quarter and had onyx stones with clear chips. The ring also had 925 stamped on it, meaning it was also made from silver. There were also the initials M and O on the inside of the band. No other markings were mentioned about the rings. In November of 2009, Jane Doe's case was uploaded to NamUs as case number UP6150. In 2012, a clay reconstruction of the Jane Doe was made. Even with all this effort, the case continued to be cold. In 2023, Stafford County Sheriff's Office teamed up with Othram to use forensic DNA technology to help identify Jane Doe. If you have any information that could help solve her case, please contact the Stafford County Sheriff's Office at 540-658-4400 with reference case number C1998-30588. Jane Doe's case is also being crowdfunded for if you'd like to donate to help with the lab fees. Hernando County John Doe 
In March of 1981, human remains of two people were discovered together on a property in the Gulf Coast community of Wikiwachi, Florida. One set of remains have been identified, but the other has not. The John Doe is thought to be a male who had been dead for up to five years when found, so potentially killed as far back as 1976. Little information could be determined beyond this. Investigators think it's possible he may have been a victim of the serial killer Billy Mansfield, who had been convicted and sentenced to life in prison, but this is not confirmed. In October of 2019, the case was uploaded to NamUs as case number UP61218. While other remains of people were discovered in the same property, all of them have been identified except this John Doe, and his case went cold. In 2023, Hernando County Sheriff's Office teamed up with Othram to use DNA technology to find John Doe's identity. If you have any information that could help solve John Doe's case, please call the Hernando County Sheriff's Office at 352-754-6830 and reference case agency number 1981-03955. John Doe's case is also being crowdfunded for if you'd like to donate to help with the lab fees. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. I know it's been a little bit since I last uploaded, but I've had a couple of things happen where I've been busier as of late in my life, but know that I'm still active and that I'm going to be hopefully uploading a little bit more regularly soon. I'm still reading everyone's comments and I really do appreciate all the support you give me. Uh, please feel free to let me know where you're all watching from. I really do enjoy s seeing the different viewers I get to have and all the support I get from you. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.